JB Knowledge Podcast Network. On episode 47 of the Insure Tech Geek Podcast, talking about insurance marketing tech with Sharmilia Wajaya Kumar from Verade. The InsureTech Geek Podcast, powered by JB Knowledge, is all about technology that's transforming and disrupting the insurance world. We'll be interviewing guests and doing deep dives into tech we see changing the industry. We're taking you on a journey through insurance tech, so enjoy the ride and geek out. Oh, man, oh, man. Another beautiful day down in Texas, I tell you what. Winter time is the time to be down here right now, Rob. Uh, I know uh, you and I both agree Michigan's great in the summer, but it's tough in the winter. I just got back, and it was cold up there. And then, then we got two days of snow in College Station, which blows my mind that San Antonio didn't get any snow, real snow, when we got literally four inches of it. But, you know, we got we got lucky, Rob. The kids got to have a snow day and because school was canceled, of course, because we had, you know, four inches, which is like northerner seat that's hilarious and and we made snowman it was fun yeah disappointment here for for my kiddos i'm excited my wife's excited we hate cold weather of course that's why we we moved to texas but uh, yeah it was supposed to stay a little bit north of us and it actually started to to we for about 30 seconds we had flurries from the sky and the kids were excited there was a lot of buzz around the house we're all throwing in our jackets and gloves and we got outside and just sat around in cold rain for about five or 10 minutes, realized that the snow flurries, they're not coming back. So yeah, some cold rain here, but it's back up to some, some decent temps today. And uh, I asked my oldest, you know, what's the weather like outside? Is it, in, in, is it warm and nice? And she said, yeah, it's pretty nice. I said, Oh, what's the temperature? And she looked it up. She's like 56. I was like, Oh, that's cold. <laughs> ah, see, you already, you got, you got and, and with us from an actually cold place, legitimately cold Chicago, Illinois, where uh, truly it earns the reputation of being the Windy City. I tell you what, Shamila, Shamila, good to see you. Thank you for joining us on the show and greetings. Uh, I hope things are well out there in Chicago. Absolutely. We definitely did get snow today. It's still got some flurries coming down. So yeah. we had that nice white powdery snow that everybody loves to just go stand in. Right? So it was nice to, to see that coming down. Nice. Well, we, we appreciate you bundling up in the wintry wilds of the north and talking about insurance tech and a phrase y'all use martech that's marketing tech we're going to talk about that a little bit too when we come back uh to you i just want to remind all you listeners out in listener land that you can subscribe to the insure tech geek podcast by texting geek out to 66866 make sure you never miss an episode we email you the show notes and the links to any news that we talk about every single week we produce the show so you can Enjoy it. Again, just text geek out to 66866 and back to our special guest, Sharmila Wajaya Kumar from Veriday. Now, we're going to talk about what Veriday does in a minute. But before we get to your company, we got to talk about you. Now, you got a bachelor's from Purdue University in Fort Wayne, a place my grandfather went, by the way. So I have, I have Purdue connections, deep Indiana roots in my family. So you got a bachelor's uh, from Purdue. You did uh, some data analytics work, University of the Southwest. You got a master's in comm from Northwestern. Uh, you, you you did the rounds on education around the country. Let's talk about your your pre college here. Your, where were you born and raised, and what did you dream of doing when you grew up? Yeah, so I was actually born in the UK, but sort of raised in Australia, and I actually thought I would enter the medical field as most Indian children do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tech, right? But back then. Tech wasn't as, as interesting as the medical field, but turns out I like tech a lot better. So um, here we are. But yeah, that's awesome. So so you didn't enter the medical field and you're a bitter disappointment to your family. No, I'm just kidding. It's not the case. Not the case at all. How, how on earth did you get from UK and Australia over to the United States for your undergrad? What happened? Yeah, you know, we'd have to. I, I actually... I'm a victim of human trafficking. And so it ended up that I needed to be in a safer place. And so I was with my grandma in West Virginia. So that's kind of how that started out. And mm. then I married an American. And so it, you know, so the story goes, we moved back to Europe for a while, but, you know, my daughter and my husband wanted to come back. So that's 
kind of how we've been here. We've been married, well, like 22 years now. So we've been here for half of it and in Europe for half of it. So, oh, yeah. wow. Well, thank you for, for letting us know. And, and certainly we're glad that you ended up here. I mean, this is a good place to hang out. There's also, you went to some great schools. So when you went to Purdue University and, you, and you're studying data analytics, you're doing communication, what, what are you thinking you're going to go and do? And, and how did you wind up in insurance? <laughs> I always have to ask people that. It was so strange. Uh, I actually started out in insurance as an insurance agent for one of the large insurers. And it was, you know, pretty much straight out of college and, and you know, something that I never thought I would do, but seemed like a really good idea at the time. It turned out I liked insurance tech way more than I liked insurance itself. So I think, you know, I wasn't, I didn't mind agency work and the people were amazing, but I actually really liked figuring out how, you know, you could do things better with technology. And that seems to be just a, a recurring theme in my life is how can we take technology and, and use it to improve something? And so it's just been a bit of a recurring theme for sure. Sure. You know, it, it's funny. Everybody has a different path into the insurance field, right? Everybody has a different, I, mine, I never studied anything to do with insurance. I, I was a technology nerd, <laughs> accounting nerd, <laughs> like, and just, just kind of stumbled into it about three years out of college and just fell in love with the industry and the people and what we do, how we enable the you know global, uh, the global economy to function, right? Like, I mean, without insurance, uh, a lot of things don't work in business, and uh, so I think it's it's pretty cool. L- let's let's flip from talking about your background, and we're gonna we're gonna dive into some more more later, like to talking about Veriday. This is this is a recent change for you career wise. So what attracted you to Veriday and and what do they do? Yeah, so I've actually known Veriday for a long time because. I previously worked at LifeRay and and Veriday was one of our digital transformation partners. And so I had known them a very long time and I watched, you know, them launch this software as a service product. And, and I love to launch new products into new markets, right? So that's one of my passions in technology. And so I watched it sort of grow, right? And it's become, you know, one of the leading platforms in MarTech for insurance and wealth management in Canada and we they were talking about bringing it to the US and I thought okay this is for me <laughs> this is a great this is a great move for me this is exactly what I would like to do and I love the folks at Verde and you know I had worked hand in hand with them for like 8 years at that point so I'm like all right this is an easy choice for me because you know it will be something that is interesting and new and also something that I'm interested in doing and have a background in. So it was for me quite an easy decision to to come over and, and look at this product. And, and what does it do? Yeah. So Digital Agent is made for companies that have large agent networks, so particularly insurance and wealth management. And the the idea is to help attract and retain new customers for those agents while still allowing companies with captive agents to keep that compliance piece going that, as you know, is really challenging in the insurance industry to make sure that you're in line with all of the different pieces that are necessary to, you know, stay in compliance. So this has made that much easier and allows for, you know, really good organization for the marketing department, but still allows personalization on the decision of the agent for their customers. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, compliance, man, it doesn't get easier, does it? Every year. <laughs> Never. You know, in, a, in an economy like the United States, where every state has its own fiefdom for insurance regulations, it becomes almost an insurmountable obstacle without technology partners helping you navigate the compliance rules, right? I mean, you used to be able to kind of hang your own shingle and do business and figure it out on your own. And that, that's really not the case anymore, is it? No. And definitely, you know, clients appreciate the fact that they don't have to do it on their own. But the bigger piece is because there are so many different regulatory compliance areas in each state and sometimes even in, in each city, they definitely want more, you know, tracking of that. And I mean, just even simple things like, are, is the agent in, able to sell in different states? And can they have data from those different states available in their product sets? Or just, you know, things that we want to 
check on because you don't want our agents with products that they can't, you know, sell for whatever reason in that particular jurisdiction and, and, you know, just simple things like that. But also personalization is where it's at today when it comes to MarTech, right? Like we want to give everyone a very personalized experience for what they're looking for and being able to track that in a way that agents can choose what content is going to each person and personalizing it is definitely, especially in a COVID world, transformational because, you know, insurance agents are used to being part of the community and really, you know, out there and seen and heard. And in a COVID world, that's all change, right? Like it's definitely not, we can't have, we can't be at the soccer matches because they're not happening and we can't be at the, you know, youth expos or whatever because they're not happening, right? And so having better ability to have that personalization online has definitely been important. And we've seen blogging surprisingly take off from within agents. And that blogging piece, we were shocked, but it has returned for a lot of companies really well to have their agents be able to do that. But also if they're not into their own blogging content, they can borrow content because we have content through our partners like Fresh Finance and Up Content and different places like that that allow them to have fresh content that they can personalize as well. So those things have, you know, we've definitely seen some trends. Yeah. And, and you know, blogging kind of went the way of the dodo bird for a little while. People really stopped publishing a lot of blogs. They would write an occasional article, but, you know, it went to largely video content and then yeah, you know, look, uh, times change a lot of things. Rob, I know you have some more questions. Yeah, no, it's it's you're you're right, James. That's obviously kind of evolved over time, and and we can personally attest to that, right, on this podcast. Yep. So going to the audio format, and we've added video for the the past few episodes. So hopefully, everyone in the audience has really appreciated that, and and hopefully you've had the chance to to tune in. If you've only been listening to us on audio, I definitely encourage you guys to you know fire up one of these on on video and kind of see the the dialogue. So, but Sharmila, I'm just you know, maybe you can go kind of just a, a, a level deeper. So my understanding is your solution is really targeted for captive agents, not independent agents and brokers, correct? Our enterprise product is definitely much more for captive agents with it. So, you know, we're really looking at the enterprise, the marketing team, that sort of thing, trying to streamline their lives that will then obviously improve agent lives as well. But we do have an RIA, you know, platform as well for the independent agents that they can use one-to-one that has similar, you know, capabilities, but they're not as obviously interested in the compliance piece because it's one at a time. So, but for them, it's all about having extra content and having the ability to have their email happen within the platform and, and track it and, you know, all those sorts of things and be able to have their own blogging and other and we have other audit features where we can see you know who's clicking on what and all that fun analytics type stuff so it's good for you know RAs as well but definitely purpose built for the enterprise perfect then so is this just email marketing campaigns or did it also apply to social media and then you know is it is it messaging around products or you mentioned some of the the content library and in I think that's a big challenge that agents have is making sure that they're putting content out there that's fresh, uh, that's relevant, uh, that's timely, that is you know, appropriate for that audience, right? And, and that is a lot to manage, particularly at scale. And as you you, you mentioned, you're, you're exactly right. Like uh, how many agents have, have sponsored, you know, I know my youngest daughter, right, is on a club soccer team. And, and like you said, it's like those kind of moments that we had as, as parents, right, are, are not those opportunities anymore during the, the pandemic. So, you know, being connected digitally amongst your existing customers and then, you know, reaching out to prospects is critically important. So maybe you can just talk about like the different channels that agents are using and how they interact with the software. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we have, what, what we see more than anything is the idea that you have, you know, you're a large insurance company, let's, you know, say you're a large life insurance company and you have 5,000 agents. And then those agents want a, the ability to be found on the large insurance website. So first of all, there's a locator capability that allows them to be found, but then it's not just a simple, you know, 
dot or anything like that. It literally opens up a page that's very, very personalized to that agent, maybe has, you know, their family or other information that they might want to have up there. So right away, you're creating a personal touch point, but then they're able to have information. Maybe they're running some events themselves locally, right? Virtually, probably now, right? But nonetheless, whether they're physical or virtual events, those would be listed. They'd be able to have other content that's interesting. So like, let's say right now, they're talking about the fact that they might, people might want to consider their life insurance whilst, you know, in the pandemic, we've certainly lost a lot of friends and family. I know other people have too, which, you know, has made people think about, hey, I wonder if we have enough life insurance and, you know, having some of that stuff available. So if people are looking, they're able to find the content they're looking for immediately. But then also, if you have current customers, you know, this is not a time that you can head out and do your, you know, annual insurance sort of check-in, right? And so being able to do those things online, having the reminders going out, having email content. So if you know specific life events are occurring, making sure that, you know, the birthdays, the, you know, new births, the anniversaries, all those things are sort of automated. And also that they're helping you as an agent with the cross-sell and upsell pieces just by the fact that you are connecting in an automated way. So you don't have to necessarily remember that it's, you know, so-and-so's birthday or so-and-so's anniversary, but that it prompts you to do those sorts of things. And then you can achieve personalized content. But on top of that, just being able to measure who's engaging with that content, what that content looks like. And if you're getting large engagement in one area, do you want to, you know, do something with that? Or if you're getting no engagement in another area, maybe that content piece needs to come down right away because what's its point, right? And also reminders about your content that it, you know, every six months to check in on it and change it and, you know, recycle things and all that sort of thing. But people really like the fact that there's a full audit trail from corporate. It's great because you can see everything that's happened and, you know, all of that. But even from an agent's perspective, you can also see what's happening. If you have other producers in your agency, you can see what they're doing. And, you know, the, the, entire piece is sort of seamlessly encouraging that, you know, new business acquisition, but then you also have the idea of helping you with customer retention and, you know, increasing your book of business with those customers. Yeah. I think that keeping everybody coordinated among many different parties to kind of present that single face to the customer makes a lot of sense. So James. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, sales and marketing is something I spend a lot of my day on in general, and it's it's a big task. And how people buy insurance is certainly changing. And you know, you're you're representing a group of folks that are trying to be dis disintermediated by a lot of other insure techs, <laughs> right? I mean, let, let's let's be honest. I mean, there, there's a lot of direct right business, you know, digital MGAs, uh, all digital carriers that are trying to bypass the entire agent. Uh, industry and go direct to not just consumers, but other businesses, right? I mean, we, we're seeing, we're interviewing these every single week on the show. So is there, how, how do you, how do you combat that? Right? Because that, you know, you're, you're, you're up against billions of dollars that are being invested in, in, in streamlining the ability for buyers to connect directly with the markets and buy, bypass their brokers. So how, how do you, how do you help how do you help the the agents and brokers maintain their ability to uh, prove their value? Because they do have a lot of value in helping people analyze. I mean, I I, I think that's something that's not stated enough. Like I, mm -hmm. I I ask my broker's opinion all the time. I don't direct write my business. I mean, to be clear, I use a broker. I, I I use one because I need someone helping me analyze all my options and make decisions and read through all the binders. It's not easy. So help me understand how you're helping them stay front and center and, and combat the 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 amount of money that's being thrown online and downstream towards uh, direct plays. At the end of the day, it's all about personalization and customer journey, right? You want to make sure that you have your customers and you understand them and that they're getting the most personalized customer journey that they possibly can through your engagements with them because that helps build trust. And we can all agree that, you know, if our insurance agent doesn't know us, I mean, last year I dumped my old one for a new one for exactly that reason. Because after 
I think three years, I was like, I've never seen you and you've no idea what's going on around me. I mean, you know, and, and it's that kind of thing because like you do need somebody who understands how you're changing and your world is changing, right? So, you know, are you having grandchildren? Are you having children? Are you buying a new house? Are you all of these different life events that cause us to you know, are we starting a business, et cetera, are required as part of that personalization journey to make sure that, you know, you're delivering expertise and credibility, which is what people are looking for in the market when they're looking for that. And I mean, I want to say it was Zurich who did a survey that said something like 60% of people who would normally want to switch insurance agents wouldn't switch if they got personalization and customer service and that customer experience that they were looking for. And if they, you know, obviously, if you can retain someone, that's what we want to help do because it increases that book of business. And so personalizing things and and having that, but also having analytics to make data driven decisions are going to be critical in all of this. Right. And the fact that we're able to track a customer cradle to grave in this way means that you have the data to then look at your book of business and be able to pull things out in reports and analytics that will then help you to have data-driven decisions. Yeah, that and that that makes a ton of sense. Rob? Yeah, I think that's a key point, Charmilla, definitely, right? The, the traceability and the, the, so that you kind of know, right, what, what's being seen, where's it being seen, what's having an impact, what's giving me a lift, what's not. Uh, so I'm going to ask the question that James always gets to ask, right, which is a little bit about the technology side of things and kind of geek out. So yeah, help us understand, like, is this a kind of a, a SaaS based subscription? Maybe talk us a little bit about your business model. And then you mentioned, you know, you were formerly at, at LifeRay. And I believe you said, you know, Verde was a, a solution provider that you worked with and knew of. And so, you know, you'd known of Verde for a while. So I know LifeRay is a technology that that I've, I've heard of more recently, but I'm, I'm not that familiar with it. So maybe, you know, if you can talk about how, you know, LifeRay is being used in any other technologies that might be involved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, LifeRay is a technology that's built on Java and uh, Digital Agent was built on top of that and has, you know, it is a SaaS solution. Uh, LifeRay is known for being a digital transformation software. It has a really good um, reputation in the insurance industry as well. And, and a lot of big insurers use it for their digital transformation when it comes to customer portal, agent portal, claims portals, and, and those sorts of things to really create those customer journeys that are important because life is great. It's multi-tenanted. You can do lots of things. So you can sort of have all those pieces come together and talk to each other, which is always a plus, right? Because nobody wants those. I mean, insurance agents, like large insurance companies have had a reputation for being a little bit less interested in digital transformation at the cutting edge side of things. So they often have siloed systems and other things like that. And this sort of life phrase, you know, ability to integrate with those really old systems and put a new face on it has been probably what has made them really popular in the insurance industry. But to add to those sorts of things, when, you, when you're when you doing a customer portal and you want self-service, and, and I mean, in today's world, is there any other way to go, right? Like with that in mind, you've then got to have these additional pieces that are making sure that you're targeting them for the right types of things. And this is where Life Rate Digital Agent go hand in hand to make sure that you have the back end and the front end pieces and also that you can track things straight from, you know, I mean, LifeRay, you can build public websites, you can build customer portals, agent portals, claims portals, all sorts of wonderful things, right? So you can kind of track everything cradle to grave, but at the same time, you want to be able to manage all of that with compliance without having to build out an entire compliance or audit system, right? So this is where they kind of sit hand in hand together. But, you know, we've seen large insurers, you know, Canada Life, even large insurers on the life race side, like Spend or Sampo, do a lot of interesting things with with the life rate technology and be able to actually do transformation that has given them, you know, some competitive advantage in the market space, especially when everything's turned digital, right? Thank you so much for for clarifying that. Uh, very, very fascinating. So sorry, I stole your question, James. Ah, no, it's fine. I've <laughs> stolen a couple of years. It's okay. 
So let's wrap it up. And, and I want to, I want to, we had a great discussion about insurance tech and marketing tech and, and agents. I, I want to take it completely off of insurance, circle back on a topic that you brought up in your personal background, and that's human trafficking. You've, you've formed a foundation for this. You've been, you are a victim of human trafficking and you, you, you chose to take that and turn it into an organization that's trying to, to do something about it. And so why don't you just tell us what, whatever you're comfortable telling us about that effort and, and what that means to you? Sure. Rahab's Daughters is an organization that I founded with some family and friends about six years ago now. And at, at the time, there was such a shortage of housing for survivors of human trafficking. I mean, in, in Illinois, they were around 16,000 a year. And we had like 18 beds in the state of Illinois for, you know, helping so we sort of started there, but as we've discussed previously, I always seem to take a turn towards technology. Right? And so we very quickly realized that it's really difficult to detect human trafficking, you know, and so we started to add to the prevention and education pieces and, you know, realize that actually a lot of trafficking happens online and a lot of the grooming process happens online. And the problem is that the average age of a trafficking victim in the U.S. is between 11 and 14. So, you know, this is a problem in so many ways that we want to work to detect it as early as we can. So we actually just finished and, and actually Verity built software for of Rahab's daughters to try to detect these places online and understand, you know, which places. And so we're about to test it at Super Bowl in a couple of weeks. So we focused it to Tampa Bay for now because during Super Bowl trafficking tends to go up by about 10 to 15 percent. And if y'all were watching the news this week, you'll see that the Hillsborough County Police Department did a remarkable job and took down about 75 traffickers. So that was pretty crazy. But we still, you know, have detected over 200 businesses that are offering illicit activities in the area. And so, you know, there is a lot to be said for doing that. And I'll be heading down to Tampa to check those out. And we'll be working with the task force and, you know, working on doing prevention, education, and, and rescue work. And, and we do that every year. We've done it for the last six or seven years. So we tend to, you know, put them into safe houses and try to assist them to place into other longer term programs. And it's, yeah, it's, it's very different. And this year during COVID, it's actually gotten very much bigger online than anywhere else. So there's actually been a 50% uptick in solicitation of children online. Yeah, it's it's really sickening to to hear about, especially the tight correlation with major sporting events like the Super Bowl and the Olympics, of course, has a major, the World Cup. Uh, these, these are major, major human trafficking events, which is just, you know, wow, it's a very, there's a very dark underside of, of, a, of a lot of major events that, that occur and so it's important to, first off, be aware and know the sheer numbers and scale. Secondly, to uh, know how we can support organizations that help combat this. Now, the, org the your organization is rahabsdaughters.org, rahabsdaughters.org. And so if you want to support her effort or check out what they're doing to combat human trafficking in your community and around the world, they have a donate button and a volunteer button right there on their website at R-A-H-A-B, Rahab's Daughters. Dot org, and you can find out more information about what uh, she's working on there, what Sharmella has uh, put together. We are so proud of you. This is an awesome effort. I love that you're using technology to combat a, a very nefarious use of technology. So, you, you know, you're using a very good use of technology to combat a very nefarious use of technology. Just proof again that there are two sides to every coin. And whenever you see something bad happening online, there's a group of good people working to build something to combat it. Right. And, uh, and that's what you're doing. And so, you know, it's, uh, it, it's important to know, to acknowledge, to not put our head in the sand and pretend like this stuff doesn't happen. Right. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, human trafficking now is the number two fastest growing criminal industry in the world. Right. So it surpassed arms trafficking and is number two only to drug trafficking. So that ought to tell you the size of the problem. Yeah, and and they're often pretty tightly intertwined. Drug drug and, and human trafficking are usually, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, usually they're being used for for that as well. So it's it's very very challenging. Well, thank you for 
doing that. Thank you for your last, uh, now this is your sixth year in, in that effort. And uh, I appreciate you sharing with us your work there. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. So look, let's let's wrap up. If you want more information on her company, it's Veriday, V-E-R-I-D-A-Y.com. Uh, and you can go and check out what they do. And uh, this is Sharmila. Uh, she's a vice president over there at Veriday, and she can answer any of your questions. Uh, as always, uh, we have a little bit of quick news in Insurance Business Mag. This is just covering a uh, latest article to cover what AXA is doing to create an insurance and technology ecosystem uh, this is just some recent coverage on something I have reported before that uh, AXA XL is pursuing the, the ability to, to, to pre-vet and connect technology providers to their insured base. Uh, they're starting in the construction sector uh, so that they can help their construction clients reduce their total risk. Uh, Rob, you and I have discussed this before, but it was a recent article, and so I thought I would just bring it up and, and remind you that there are insurance carriers that are pulling all the pieces together and helping vet these kind of solutions for their clients. And uh, Rob, I think you have news related to a previous interview. Yeah, I do. So uh, big news kind of hit the wire yesterday, James, that American Family Insurance is going to be acquiring Bold Penguin. So you guys may remember that a previous guest was Amber Willett, of, uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Bold Penguin. Ironically, Amber used to work many years ago at American Family, so it's a bit of a, a round tripper for her. And American Family Ventures was actually one of the early investors uh, in Build Penguin, and so obviously that investment has uh, paid off. And you might recall as well a previous news item that Build Penguin uh, acquired Risk Genius towards the end of last year. So you had InsureTech acquiring another InsureTech, so um, Risk Genius. Uh, which is now part of Bull Penguin is also part of this deal as the, the article relates. So another kind of, you know, merger and acquisition to uh, start our year 2020 off right. The, the InsureTech exits continue, you know, full steam ahead, tons of momentum. And, you know, again, it's it's kind of exciting uh, to see in this space. So uh, Sharmila, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, kind of the work that you've seen at Verde and, and just in SureTech in general, you know, you've seen just the, the the validation from the insurance industry in general, from curators and others, you know, this use of technology in the insurance space. And there's plenty more opportunity, I would imagine, out there from your perspective. So just curious, any thoughts you have on kind of InsureTech for 2021? Yeah, I mean, definitely we see it trending towards transformation, right? Like we see insurers asking, how can we transform um, and how can we do things digitally? So I think the bull penguin acquisition just makes sense for American Family, and and we'll I think we'll see more acquisitions this year of large insurance carriers bringing in technology to help. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you, Rob, for that. Appreciate it. And we'll have to we'll have to give Amber we'll a, a a ring and see if she'll provide some commentary on that once we find out how they're going to sort all this out. But uh, congrats to the team there. And that is all we have for this week. Again, thanks for tuning into the show. Uh, this has been the InsureTech Geek Podcast, uh, powered by JB Knowledge. That's jbknowledge.com. Uh, we are all about technology transforming and disrupting the insurance world. I've been your host, James Benham, jamesbenham.com, with co host Rob Galbraith. That is endofinsurance.com. Big thanks to Jim Green, our podcast producer, Kara Dalton, our creative producer, and thank you for joining us today. We're taking you on a journey through insurance tech, so enjoy the ride and geek out. See you next week. Thank you.